How deep does the Demon Slayer iceberg go? What is the origin of demons? What's the deal with Inosuke's father? What places censored what parts of Demon Slayer? How dark do Demon Slayer theories get? And much more is dealt with in this video as we move from the more commonly known and visible aspects of Demon Slayer to the less commonly known and darker aspects of it. So make sure to stay tuned for that since the further you get, the deeper you get in your Demon Slayer knowledge. Now let's make an agreement here. If you learn something new in this video, then like and subscribe to the channel. That is my one and only request. And without further ado, let's dive in. So for layer 1, the most visible layer of the iceberg, we got the anime which began airing in 2019. So far, the anime that focuses on Demon Slayer Tanjiro and his demon sister, Nezuko, has had three seasons. Season 1 included his Demon Slayer training arc and his fight against Lower Moon 5 Rui. Season 2 included the Mugen train arc and his fight against buffed up Lower Moon 1 Enmu. And Season 3 included the Entertainment District arc and his fight against Upper Moon 6 Daki and Gyutaro. Season 4, called the Swordsmith Village Arc, is set to release April 2023 and trailers have revealed that the Mist Pillar and the Love Pillar will be highlighted in this one. And with that, let's go deeper to Layer 2. Now this layer will deal with manga stuff and manga mysteries, so there will be spoilers. I mean, what do you expect in a video that's supposed to go deep with the knowledge? I've seen some iceberg videos actually put manga reveals way down in the lower layers of an iceberg, but that makes no sense to me since if people just had to read the manga, manga to figure it out, it's not that deep. So we'll be covering manga stuff in this one so that even manga fans can learn something as they move deeper down. The anime Demon Slayer is based on the Demon Slayer manga which ran in Weekly Shonen Jump from February 15th 2016 to May 18th 2020, so for over 4 years. The manga was created by Koyoharu Gotoge and is classified as simultaneously being an adventure, dark fantasy, and martial arts story. The original manga consists of 23 volumes and 205 chapters. Now let's get into some of the biggest mysteries revealed in the manga. Muzan was the first demon and he was turned into a demon by a doctor living in the Heian period. Notably, the Heian period ran from the year 794 to 1185. Muzan was sick and frail since he was in the womb, and he was going to die before he turned 20. The doctor worked hard to give him a little longer to live, but Muzan was mad about his worsening condition. So in a fit of rage, he took the doctor's life. Only after did he realize that the doctor's medicine was having an effect. He gained incredible strength, but could no longer be exposed to sunlight. He also started to crave human flesh and started to eat people. Ever since he became a demon, he desired a body that would not die in the sun. All he knew was that the doctor used blue spider lilies in his experiment, but since he took his life, Muzan couldn't ask him to continue his research or where he found the blue spider lilies. Muzan continued to search for these flowers, but never succeeded in finding them. Notably, the blue spider lily does not exist in real life, and in the series, it was revealed in the final chapter that the flower only blooms during the day two or three days a year, which is why Muzan could never find it, since he could only search for it at night. Speaking of Muzan and his wish to be able to survive in the sun though, Nezuko ends up becoming immune to the sun. Muzan assumes that he can become immune to the sun too if he consumes Nezuko. However, he never gets to consume her because A, she is turned back to human with medicine, and B, the Demon Slayer core succeeds in beating Muzan. Then we get the very crazy twist of Tanjiro briefly becoming the next Demon King. Yes, Muzan gives his power to Tanjiro in the hopes that he will take his place as the perfect being. And since Nezuko could gain immunity to the sun, Muzan rightly predicts that Demon King Tanjiro will be able to gain an immunity to it as well. Tanjiro becomes the perfect demon that Muzan longed for, but the power of the medicine and friendship turns him back to normal. The consequences of the final battle are brutal though. Our protagonist Tanjiro has lost the use of an arm and an eye, while Giyu, Sanemi, and the long-retired Tengen are the only Hasha to survive the final battle. Even Sanami's little brother Genya doesn't make it through the final battles. The final chapter of Demon Slayer fast forwards to modern day Tokyo. We see some ancestors and some reincarnations. The general rule is that the characters who survived the battle with the demons left descendants, while the characters that died fighting the demons got reincarnated so that they could live out a happier life. Through the descendants, it's made clear that Tanjiro ended up with Kanao and Zenitsu ended up with Nezuko. When this chapter initially dropped, some of the fandom even questioned if it 
it was Zenitsu and Nezuko who ended up together or if it was their descendants but to me it was pretty obvious from the beginning it was Nezuko and Zenitsu and we'll get clarification later as well from the mangaka but notably we even see a descendant of Inosuke's but we'll have to wait until lower in the iceberg to see who he ended up with. Yorichi the Sun Breather who beat and traumatized Muzan is another mysterious figure. Some guess that he was Tanjiro's dad or at least an ancestor at first. But as is revealed in the manga, he was actually Upper Moon One's brother. He created the original and strongest breath style, Sun Breathing, and then helped other Demon Slayers come up with the inferior offshoots that we know today, like Water and Flame Breathing. He lost his wife and child to demons, so he didn't have any descendants, as far as we know. However, he did save a descendant of Tanjiro's, a man called Sumiyoshi Kamado. Sumiyoshi passed down Yorichi's earrings and sun breathing style through the dance of the fire god to future generations until they reached Tanjiro, the man who would go on to finally beat Muzan, of course with help. An interesting detail that's easy to miss in your first read through is that Zenitsu Senpai Kaigaku is also the orphan who betrayed Gyomei and other orphans to a demon. He would go on to betray his and Zenitsu Sensei to become a demon himself. Their Sensei takes his own life because of this. This leads to one of the most epic fights in the series where Zenitsu seeking to avenge his Sensei takes on Kaigaku who's become the new Upper Moon 6. Not only does Zenitsu beat an Upper Moon on his own, we even find out that he created his own epic form of thunder breathing called 7th form Honoi Kazuchi no Kami aka Flaming Thunder God. Wow what an epic name. Then there's the mystery of Inosuke's father and how his father was actually Upper Moon 2 Doma. Well, at least in a sense. When Doma first saw Inosuke's mom, she was only 17 or 18 and had already given birth to baby Inosuke. It's revealed that her husband, aka Inosuke's biological father, beat her every day and her mother-in-law bullied her too. As a result, she ran away and joined Doma's cult called Paradise Faith. She had even gone blind in one eye because of the beatings. When she found out that Inosuke's new demon stepfather was eating his other followers, she tried to escape with baby Inosuke. She dropped Inosuke from a cliff so he could escape while her life was taken by Doma. Baby Inosuke went on to survive and was raised by boars. He'd go on to create his own breathing style, Beast Breathing. Akaza, Upper Moon 3, and the guy that took our beloved Flame Hashira from us is actually a good guy. Now, good guy might not be the right word for him, and it might be a bit extreme, but man does his backstory make you look at him differently. He became a criminal because he was stealing medicine for his sick father. He fell in love with a girl and the rival dojo killed her and her father, who was Akaza's mentor. So he took them all down and didn't care Care about living anymore when Muzan found him. Even after losing his memories and becoming a demon, Akaza refused to eat women, who are especially nutritious and would have made him stronger. It's even mentioned that Doma might have not surpassed him if Akaza ate women as well, but his principles, even as a demon, were stronger than his desire to just, well, get stronger. Now I'm sure there were interesting details or mysteries in the manga that I've left out, but those are some of the bigger mysteries and surprises that manga readers would be aware of. If I left some big stuff out in your opinion, let me know in the comments and it may make it in an updated version of this video down the line, so make sure you're subscribed for when that comes out. Now it's time for layer 3. We're getting deeper down and you could have watched all the episodes and read all 205 chapters and still not know this stuff. First, let's start with a considerable mistake by the mangaka. In the original release, of chapter 204, Tanjiro, who has lost the use of one arm, is shown cleaning with both arms and eating with both arms on the final page. This was corrected in the 23rd and final volume of the Demon Slayer manga series. The mangaka apologized for this error to the fans in the weekly author's note in Shonen Jump. But I don't think any of us hold it against her, especially considering the very busy schedule for mangaka who have to publish chapters weekly. On the topic of the mangaka, they maintain anonymity in public, and Koyoharu Gotoge is in actuality a pen name. The mangaka uses an alligator with glasses as their avatar when making announcements about their series. And although many people, at least in my comment section, seem to think Koyoharu Gotoge is a man, a weekly Shonen Jump employee disclosed that the mangaka is a woman, which is why you'll hear me saying she in prior Demon Slayer videos on this channel and probably later in this video as well. And by the way, she joins a stacked lineup of female mangaka who created amazing works and some of my favorites like Inuyasha, Full Metal Alchemist, Honey and Clover, Marsh Comes in Like a Lion, and many more. Koyoharu has commented that she drew inspiration from multiple other manga like Gintama, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Naruto, and Bleach. 
This 33-year-old award-winning mangaka also became the first mangaka to be included in Time Magazine's annual list of the 100 most influential people in 2021 because of the popularity of Demon Slayer. If you want, rewind that because it's huge. And as I mentioned before, we find out who Inosuke ended up with in the bonus material that was revealed after the final chapter in the 23rd volume. Although you might have predicted it already, it was in fact Aoi. We're told that the Aoba Hashibira that we saw in the final chapter is their great-grandchild. And we even get a super cute bonus panel of Inosuke with his boar mask gifting Aoi nuts and acorns to her delight. It is definitely the least focused on romantic relationship of the main three, but if you want a detailed breakdown of it and all the earlier clues that they'd end up together, you can check out my video on Inosuke and Aoi's relationship explained, link in the description. These bonus pages also made the ending much more satisfying in my opinion since the original ending did feel rushed and many fans have commented on this. In fact, it seems like there was a reason for this since multiple articles have claimed that Koyoharu rushed the ending part because of family issues, specifically due to a situation with her parents. In addition to the bonus ending in the final manga volume, there are also interesting extra pages between chapters that reveal stuff about the Demon Slayer world that you wouldn't otherwise know, since they aren't mentioned in the main story. For instance, in one of these pages, we find out why Mitsuri's uniform is more revealing than that of Shinobu's, for example. The Demon Slayer uniform tailor called Masao Maeda designed all the female uniforms to be similarly revealing, so it's not surprising that he's been nicknamed the four-eyed creep in the series. However, Shinobu burned her uniform and gave oil and matches so that Aoi and Kanao could burn theirs too. This explains why they don't have uniforms like Mitsuri's. Mitsuri ultimately continued to wear hers as is, despite being initially embarrassed about it. Also, if you didn't know, her green socks were a gift from her true love, Iguro the Snake Hashira. And these extra pages can also deliver very random information indeed. Like in one case, we're told that Tanjiro's ancestor's wife, Suyako, slept like crazy and would end up falling asleep on the roadside multiple times, causing her husband Sumiyoshi to worry if she's alright. There are also two fan books that have yet to be translated into English. I can't wait until they are released though, since within them we have gems like information about how Saintsu's Kasugai Crow is the only sparrow to to appear in the series and pass the Kasugi test. It is the only one that can talk, its family was killed by demons so it wanted to help them too. Yes, even Zainsu Sparrow has a meaningful backstory, although nicknamed Chuntaro, we're told his name is actually Ukogi. In the complete volumes box set release, not only do you get a cool Demon Slayer box with the complete 23 volumes showcasing the Tanjo vs Muzan final battle on one side, but they also throw in a poster which has Tanjo Inosuke, Zenitsu, Kanao, and Giyu holding their swords on one side, and Tanjo and Nezuko on the reverse side. It also comes with a short bonus Demon Slayer core special report. It doesn't have much except some character breakdown, some early sketches, and some bonus trivia facts. Like that Zenitsu loves sweet and expensive foods like eels, so he would have been fat if he wasn't a swordsman. Layer 4. Demon Slayer is bigger than you ever could have imagined. It is currently the ninth best-selling manga of all time in climbing. This is insane for a number of reasons. Demon Slayer started in 2016, and the second most recent one after it in the top 10, namely Naruto, started in 1999. Meaning, all the other ones had 17 years, or in most cases, a lot more to grow their sales. Another notable detail is that within the top 10, Demon Slayer has the least volumes to sell. It only has 23, while half of the top 10 have 100 volumes or more, and one, namely Golgo 13, has 205. Put another way, despite how relatively new Demon Slayer is, it has almost the most average sales per volume at 6.52 million, beating out One Piece and Naruto by this metric. In the top 10, only the iconic OG battle shown in Dragon Ball has a higher average sales per volume at 8.33 million, and it came out 32 years before Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer broke record after record. Articles came out about Demon Slayer alone outselling the entire comics industry in 2020. In 2019, Oricon had Demon Slayer number 1 at their yearly manga sales ranking at over 12 million copies sold. Then, get this, in 2020, they came in first again but this time, wait for it, Demon Slayer sold over 82 million copies. Second place Kingdom only sold about 8.2 million, aka about 10 times less. And don't get me wrong, 8.2 million is a lot, but Demon Slayer's numbers just dwarfed everything else beyond belief. 
2021 was another great year for manga. Surprisingly, Demon Slayer wasn't first, but it came close. First place was Jujutsu Kaisen with about 31 million, then Demon Slayer with about 29.5 million, and then Tokyo Revengers with almost 25 million. Still an amazing year for Demon Slayer, and crazy to think that just two years prior, all three of these manga would have been more than doubled what first place got. So it seems that the insanity of Demon Slayer boosted manga sales in general, at least temporarily. Perhaps not surprisingly, since the Demon Slayer manga has been finished for a while, Demon Slayer didn't make the top 5 best selling series of 2022. While Jujutsu Kaisen, Tokyo Revengers, Spy X Family, One Piece, and My Hero Academia did. However, Jujutsu Kaisen's top spot of 12.3 million is a far cry from Demon Slayer's record of 82 million in a year, and even a lot less than its own sales a year prior. It goes to show how insanely popular Demon Slayer was in 2020. And it wasn't just the manga that broke records. The Demon Slayer movie became the number one highest grossing movie of all time in the Japanese box office, comfortably beating out insanely popular movies like Spirited Away, Titanic, Frozen, and Your Name. It's not just the fact that an anime movie became number one, since that happened before obviously with Spirited Away, but the fact that a movie based on a shonen anime series hit number one is unheard of. Now that Demon Slayer has gotten the ball rolling, one Piece Film Red also recently broke into the top 10. But before that, you wouldn't see movies for shonen anime series anywhere close to this high up. The Demon Slayer opening theme song even closed out the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. The song peaked at number 2 on Billboard Japan's Hot 100 rankings, showing how vastly popular it was in Japan. But it's even more awesome that it was performed on the world stage like that, showing how Demon Slayer was captivating the entire world one way or another. And since we're on popularity here, let me just go over the character popularity polls of this insanely popular series. In other words, let's see who was the most popular of the most popular. In the first popularity poll, the top 10 most popular were from 1st to 10th, Tanjiro Zen Zenitsu Nezuko Giyu, Inosuke, Shinobu, Rengoku, Kanao, the mangaka herself, and Makomo. And I'm just gonna guess that Makomo won't make it to the second popularity poll. In the second popularity poll, which was released in 2020, the list went like this. Zenitsu first, Giyu second, Tokito the Mist Hashira third, followed by Tanjiro Shinobu, Inosuke, Rengoku, Iguro, Sanami, and Kanao. The last one was done after the series was completed, so it gives you a good sense of how the fanbase felt after the finale. I totally get Zenitsu being first after his epic fight with Upper Moon Kaigaku and everything, but I must admit, I'm pretty surprised Tanjiro dropped all the way to 4th place. Layer 5 Now let's get into the world of Demon Slayer spinoffs. One spinoff you may have seen clips on YouTube from is Junior High and High School Kimetsu Academy Story. It's a spinoff miniseries of anime shorts set in the Kimetsu Academy universe, which is itself a spinoff universe in the modern world based off characters in Demon Slayer. There's also a manga taking place in this universe called Kimetsu Gakuen. The manga started in 2021 and it's ongoing. Its genre is classified as comedy, school life, and spin-off. As you may imagine, they find creative roles for the different characters to fill in the modern world, even if they were Hashira or demons in the original manga. In junior high, you'll find people like Senjuro Rengoku and Nezuko. In senior high, you'll find Tanjiro, Zainsu, Inosuke, Kanao, Aoi, Shinobu, and more. Most of the Hashira are staff. Giyu is a PE aka physical education teacher and he's known in the school as the man who never smiles. Tengen is the art teacher, Gyome is the civics teacher and first year homeroom teacher, Sanami is the math teacher, Kanae is the biology teacher and flower arrangement club advisor, Snake Hashira Obanai Iguro is the chemistry teacher and you may get a kick out of Sakonji Urokodaki being the school janitor. In Love Hashira Mitsuri's case, she's already graduated and is attending an art university university nearby. Muzan is an evil politician trying to take over Japan, Upper Moon 1 Kokushibo is Muzan's secretary, while Upper Moon 2 Doma is a scam artist. But not all demons are super evil in this world. Kyogai, the drum demon, is a music teacher in this school. Even Gyutaro and Ume aka Daki make an appearance. They are the greatest delinquent siblings of the academy and frequently cause trouble. There was also a Demon Slayer video game called The Hinokami Chronicles. I actually played it when it came out and the fun thing is you can actually choose to play as characters from the Kimetsu Academy universe in the game. The game is a third person action arena fighter, allowing the two players to fight on a battlefield, think Smash Bros or Dragon Ball Z Budokai games. Demon Slayer light novels have also been released, like The Flower of Happiness, 
One Winged Butterfly, and Signs from the Wind. These three light novels expand on the Demon Slayer story, covering stuff like when Shinobu and her sister first came to beg Yome to take them on as Demon Slayer apprentices, and when the Hashira were given the unorthodox request of trying to make the water Hashira smile. The Flower of Happiness has already been officially released in English, while the One Winged Butterfly is set to release in February 28th, 2023, and Signs from the Wind is set to release on June 27th, 2023. You can pre-order them now on Amazon. Plus, if you like Rengoku and Gyu, you're in luck because there is a manga volume called Demon Slayer Stories of Water and Flame that you can purchase. Notably, this spin-off wasn't done by Demon Slayer creator Koyoharu Gotoge, in the same way that the official series was. Although Gotoge is credited for the original concept on the cover, Ryoji Hirano is credited for the story and art. On the Amazon side itself, Gotoge is credited as draft writer. This might be how we get future Demon Slayer manga as well, since it seems like Gotoge will not be returning to the series, rather Gotoge said she'd be working on a science fiction romantic comedy next. But I'm sure we're all on the same page and hoping the mangaka changes her mind and comes back to handle future Demon Slayer projects. This is actually looking more possible recently since after the statements made about the science fiction romantic comedy, more recent articles have come out reporting that Gotoge still hasn't decided on or started any next work. But back to the Rengoku and Giyu manga spin-offs. Giyu's story follows him as he and Shinobu help a girl whose father has become a demon. This takes place after he initially saves Tanjiro and spares Nezuko. They save the girl before her demon father can take her life and try to encourage her to live on even though it feels like she's lost everything. The fights aren't really the focus here, but if you like Giyu and Shinobu's dynamic, you're sure to enjoy this one. After the mission, while the two are eating, Giyu, believe it or not, even cracks a smile, although we only see Shinobu's reaction to it as Giyu is facing away from us. Shinobu comments that she's never seen Giyu smile before. The side story emphasizes how Giyu has begun to change after his initial encounter with Tanjiro. The Rengoku section is definitely the more exciting one. It follows Kyojuro Rengoku before he was a Hashira and before Mitsuri created Love Breathing and was still trying to learn Flame Breathing from Kyojuro. In this section, it's explained that to become a Hashira, you need to be a Kinoe ranked core member and defeat either 50 demons or one of the 12 Kizuki demons, aka one of the 12 demon moons. Kinoe is the highest rank before Hashira, by the way. Before Kinoe is Kinoto, then Hinoe, Hinoto, Tsuchinoe, Tsuchinoto, Kanoe, Kanoto, Mizunoe, and then the lowest rank is Mizunoto. So there are 10 ranks altogether, not counting Hashira. But back to Rengoku, in this side story, his father, the current flame Hashira, has become a poor excuse for a Hashira. He drinks before missions and on missions, and doesn't even bother to come when called. After his wife's death, he doesn't see the point of anything. So Kyojuro decides to step up and take his place as flame Hashira. In order to do so, he defeats a former Lower Moon 2 with Mitsuri's help. This Lower Moon is very unique in that his Blood Demon arc revolves around shadows and shadow wolves. These shadows can suck in and store things like guns or swords. He often fights with the guns, rifles, or even old school machine guns he has stored within him. And to make matters worse, he used time bombs too. A very tricky demon to be sure, and you really feel like Kyojuro earned the title of Hashira when he overcomes this demon moon. Notably, in both Gyu and Kyojuro's stories, Mitsuri is shown with Iguro. So that's an easter egg that hardcore Mitsuri and Iguro shippers like me will appreciate. But seriously, for people like me who love Rengoku and consider him to be one of my favorite Hashira, this side story is an amazing tribute to him and his character. Fun anime opera trivia fact, Rengoku is on the only poster I have in my room, that's how much I respect the character. After these two longer side stories, the Flame and Water volume includes a sort of manga summary of what happened in the Demon Slayer anime so far, but realism and tension goes out the window for the sake of comedy. For instance, Gyu makes snowmen and an igloo while he waits for Tanjiro and Nezuko to wake up in the first episode. The swamp demon obeys Muzan so that Muzan won't spread the embarrassed demon's poetry around and so on. And in the volume afterward, Hirano does make it clear that Gotoge took time to check the rough layouts and even made corrections when necessary, so these Giyu and Rengoku side stories can be viewed as canon even if Gotoge didn't draw them. Lastly, a special one-shot side story was made by Gotoge to hype up the Mugen Train movie. Again, it dealt with Rengoku, who is the blazing star of the arc after all. 
Again, we have more Kyojuro epicness here. The dude really never fails to impress. On his first ever mission, he overcomes a tricky demon who uses hearing to disorient demon slayers by hitting his own ears so hard it ruptured his eardrums. Then he proceeds to wreck the demon to the demon's shock. It cannot be said enough, this dude is such a legend. And a standout funny moment for me was when the flute demon was disappearing and his last words were, No! I was going to join the 12 Kizuki, end quote. Layer 6. The Demon Slayer mangaka released other manga projects before Demon Slayer took off in 2016. The very first one from 2013 was called Kagarigari. This one shot was a sort of prototype for Demon Slayer, and many ideas that would find their way into Demon Slayer are included in this one shot. Yushiro and Tamayo are present, so is another character that dresses similarly to Muzan. The demon antagonist is eventually taken out by a human swordsman who reminds me a bit of Gi. His family was killed by demons like Tanjiro's, and the swordsman even had to go through his own final selection exam. He also lost an arm, which might remind you of how Tengen loses his arm, or how even Tanjiro himself eventually loses the use of his arm. But despite the clear similarities, the mangaka definitely changed a lot of things for the Demon Slayer manga series, including the addition of main characters like Tanjiro Zaitsu and Inosuke, whom we love so much. However, during the three years between Kagaragiri and Kimetsu no Yaiba, Koyoharu also released a one-shot called Monju Shiro Kyodai in 2014, Rokotsu-san in 2014 as well, and Hainiwa no Zigzag in 2015. These one-shots were published together as short stories by the manga artist, but unfortunately there hasn't been an official English release yet. Still, from the images, you can see how some of these works make their way into Demon Slayer as well, like how the cover character of Monju Shiro Kyodai looks very reminiscent to Snake Hasha Obanai Iguro. In Rokotsu-san, the story follows a blind character who can see the good and evil in people. The idea is reminiscent of the stone Hashira Gyome. Lastly, Zigzag can be found translated online and follows a character who removes curses. Surprisingly, the protagonist is very different from the kind-hearted and moral Tanjiro. He actually wanted to kill people through curses before because he could make a lot of money that way, but then he got cursed himself so that he could never kill or use his power for personal gain. He's sort of forced to be a good guy against his will by the curse, an interesting concept and one very different from Tanjiro and Demon Slayer. Unlike Tanjiro 2, Zigzag's protagonist punishes people who do bad things and is described as a poison that will eradicate eradicate evil. Lastly, he uses plant-based powers, which I found interesting. You can tell Koyoharu is into plants since we also have the blue spider lilies in Demon Slayer that turned Muzan into a demon in the first place. Layer 7. Demon Slayer has been censored, and I'm not talking about just calling the Red Light District arc the Entertainment District arc. Specifically, China censored the anime. For instance, in China, Tanjo's earrings are changed because they felt like the earrings resembled the flag of the rising sun too much, which is associated with Japanese imperialism. South Korea also censored the earrings. Other censorship in China includes covering up the chest area, as seen with Tengen's wives. You can even find censored images of Daki wearing pants during her fight against Tanjiro on the internet. But be careful because there are also fan-made images of fake censorship poking fun at how China has censored the anime. Layer 8. So we talked about what China did to Demon Slayer, let's briefly discuss what the internet did to Demon Slayer. As with many popular shows, Demon Slayer has given birth to multiple ongoing jokes and countless memes. I've been a fan of the series for a long time, and as a result, I've been exposed to a lot of this. Some of the common jokes and or memes poke fun at how Zenitsu needs to fall asleep to fight, and sometimes on how that hilariously backfired on Enmu, who thought putting Demon Slayers to sleep would make them powerless. Then there is the similarities between Zenitsu and Gyutaro, as they are both jealous of Tengen having three wives, about how Gyu has no friends, about Muzan being Michael Jackson, about how we must all protect Nezuko, and of course we can't forget Tanjiro's memeable faces of disgust. And because of the lack of actual romantic content in the manga itself, as you may guess, people have created fanfiction to fill in the details. One such fanfiction can be found on YouTube depicting Tanjiro and Kano's proposal, and it has 1.6 million views, showing not only how popular Demon Slayer is, but also how much more people want of these characters. As one top voted commenter mentioned, and I quote, it's the part of the manga that we never had, but we deserved, end quote. 
In the fan-made motion manga, an older Tanjiro flips a coin recalling to an earlier moment in the series, but this time replaces the coin with a ring. I appreciate the general attention to detail and the respect it pays to the history of the story, not to mention that it's super sweet. The only thing I will add is that Tanjiro should technically not have access to both hands, and one of his eyes should not work, but aside from those nitpicks, it's great. Notably, although everyone loves the Kano and Tanjiro ship, the unrealized Giyu and Shinobu ship is one of the most popular ones among Demon Slayer fans. The third light novel also puts focus on the less known ship of Sanami and Kanae, Shinobu's older sister. Despite this ship being less talked about in the fandom, it actually has much more of a basis in the story itself than Giyu x Shinobu for example. In fact, in one of the official Demon Slayer fanbooks that I mentioned, there is a section where the Hashira state their impressions on the other Hashira. Gyomei says the following about Sanami. He has a strong spirit and is honest at heart. He likes Kanae. End quote. Unfortunately, the fan books haven't gotten official English releases yet either, as far as I can find, but if you find full translations, or if they do get official English releases after this video goes up, let us know in the comments. On a side note, it's annoying how I can find all these books translated in French on Amazon and not in English. Why are the French so ahead in anime appreciation? I don't know, but the English-speaking world has to pick up the slack. Layer 9. For this one, I'll mention some Demon Slayer theories, including some pretty dark ones. One not so dark one is that dragon shaped attacks are the strongest. Not surprisingly, dragons are associated with power and even godliness in Japan. I don't think it's a coincidence that Kaido, called the strongest creature in the world, has the Azur dragon fruit in fellow Shonen Jump manga One Piece. Dragons are strong, very strong, and so things associated with them are in turn associated with this ultimate power. Thus, it's no coincidence that the first and strongest breath style sun breathing even has a form called Dragon Sun Halo Head Dance. Besides that, we've seen Tundra's attacks take the form of a fiery dragon as well. Notably though, not every breathing style takes the form of a dragon. However, the 10th form of water breathing, and arguably the strongest form called Constant Flux, takes the form of a water dragon. The only one that comes after is Giyu's personally created form, but it's a defensive one rather than an offensive one. In addition to sun breathing and water breathing, one of Zenitsu's attacks also breaks all hype limiters and takes the form of a dragon. It's specifically his already mentioned personally invented seventh form called Honoi Kazuchi no Kami aka Flaming Thunder God. It takes the form of a dragon shaped lightning bolt and is definitely the strongest form of thunder breathing. It allows him to quickly take out his sort of demon brother aka demon senpai Kaigaku. Without the demon enhanced thunder breath user even being able to see what happened. Considering he's an upper moon and that the thunder breath users are especially fast even without demon enhancements, it's an insanely impressive feat by Zenitsu and it further hypes up dragon shaped attacks. Lastly, this is not the case in the manga, interestingly enough, but it is in the anime Flame Hashira Kyojuro Rengoku's strongest attack, 9th form Rengoku, takes on the form of an epic flame dragon in the movie. Notably, Iguro the Serpent Hashira's attacks often take the form of a snake or serpent, but not of a dragon. It will be interesting to see if the anime continues to add dragon-shaped attacks not present in the manga as they did with Rengoku or if that was a one-time change. And I don't think it was a coincidence that the three styles besides sun breathing that took the form of a dragon were part of the five main breathing styles which include thunder, flame, water, stone, and wind. The thing that makes these five special is that they are only once removed from sun breathing, the strongest and original breathing style. So though it was not stated in black and white in the manga, it appears that these five along with moon breathing should be considered stronger in general than the other breathing styles which are more than once removed from the strongest style sun breathing. After all, not all breathing styles are created equal and Gotoge has made that clear in the manga by consistently emphasizing that sun breathing is the strongest. Thus offshoots of offshoots of sun breathing like flower and serpent breathing, which come from water breathing, should be considered weaker than the primary offshoots. That being said, obviously the skill of the user is important, and Iguro as a serpent breather is way stronger than Murata as a water breather. Now let's briefly go over how the breathing styles are related, since it's never fully explained in the story. Sun breathing is obviously the original. It then breaks up into water, moon, flame, thunder, stone, and wind. Flower and serpent breathing come from water breathing, while insect breathing is the furthest of all breathing styles from sun breathing since it comes from flower breathing. And since I often rank Shinobu, no matter how much I love her, as the weakest Hashira, this makes sense. Love breathing comes from flame breathing. Which goes well with the Rengoku side story where we learned that Mitsuri initially was learning flame breathing. Sound breathing comes from thunder breathing. 
and Beast and Mist Breathing come from Wind Breathing. That gives us 14 confirmed breath styles in Demon Slayer. However, we saw two more, namely Demon Enhanced Thunder Breathing and Demon Enhanced Moon Breathing. While it's been confirmed that the elemental effects we see the Demon Slayers using aren't actually real, the Demon Enhanced versions do actually use the element in question in their attacks. For instance, Kaigaku actually creates lightning that burns Zenitsu's flesh. With these two demon enhanced styles, you can say there are 16 rather than 14 confirmed breath styles, while in theory there could be up to 28, when counting each style and its demon alternative. But even this number is not definitive, since if the world of Demon Slayer were to go on and new demons were to appear, it's possible that new breath styles would be invented, just like Shinobu invented insect breathing, Mitsuri invented love breathing, and Inosuke invented beast breathing. Now let's discuss why Tanjo's sword is black. The easiest way to explain it is because he is a sun breather and the first breath style user Yorichi also had a black blade that turned red when used in battle. What people may not have noticed is that this goes very well with Tanjiro's origins. Tanjiro was a coal burner. Coal is also black until you burn it. The sword turning red has also been associated with heat and Tanjiro even had to use Nezuko's flames to turn it red for a while. So really, even aside from being a sun breather thing, it goes perfectly with Tanjiro and his background. It makes sense as a coal burning thing family, they would be sun breathers. Another unique aspect to Demon Slayer are the Demon Slayer marks. The Demon Slayer marks are like going Super Saiyan for Demon Slayers. They become faster and stronger, but it comes at a cost, a severe cost. The curse of the mark means that Demon Slayers who awaken the mark die before reaching the age of 25. That's what Upper Moon 1 Kokushibo tells us. This puts a dark spin on the end of Demon Slayer because it means that people who awaken the mark but survive the final battle like Tanjiro, Giyu, and Sanami only have until 25 to live. Considering that so many people died already, that's a hard pill to swallow. Even if Tanjiro Jiro did have about another decade to live and even had kids. However, their deaths at 25 haven't been confirmed, and perhaps we could come to the conclusion that since the demons were defeated, then the curse has been lifted. And even if it weren't, Yorichi, as Kokushibo explains, was an exception and lived on well past 25, even though he had the mark. Perhaps it's wishful thinking, but if Yorichi could do it, perhaps fellow Sun Breather and Yorichi's successor Tanjiro could also overcome the curse. But if we just follow how curses usually work, that is a very dark theory indeed to assume that Tanjiro can't live past 25. Another theory to consider is that the demon threat may not be over, and this could be the case for a variety of reasons. Even in the modern day, Yushiro is still alive, painting pictures of Tamayo. This suggests that there could be other demons too that survived out there even after Muzan was killed. Then there's the fact that Muzan wasn't a demon until a doctor somehow turned him into one using the blue spider lily. Thus, there's no guarantee that another doctor will make the same mistake and turn someone else into a demon. And the other thing to consider is, is Muzan and or his influence influence gone forever. After all, we saw him inject his blood into Tanjiro and we saw him even manifest himself inside of Tanjiro. So it could be possible that he could manifest himself inside of Tanjiro again. Granted, since the future is at peace, it looks like there weren't any issues and that Tanjiro lived happily ever after. But considering how quickly Tanjiro went from Demon King Tanjiro to human again, one wonders if the possibility remains for him to access those demon powers again at some point. In addition to the medicine, Tanjiro's belief in his friends who were waiting for him helped him reject Muzan's influence. So one wonders if something happened to trigger him, like the death of his loved ones, could it cause him to snap and awaken that influence within him again? The implications of Demon King Tanjiro would also be insane, which is why in all honesty, this would probably never happen. The story didn't cover it, but if Tanjiro passed through his berserk mode, he could have eventually become like Higaku and Kokushibo. In other words, he could have become a demon-enhanced sun breather. That would make him unbeatable because as suggested in the series, he like Muzan could overcome beheading and he as a sun breathing demon was immune to the sun and thus to Nichiren blades which get their power from the sun. Muzan succeeded in creating the perfect unbeatable demon so much so that the only way to stop Demon King Tanjiro was through the power of friendship before he ever got strong enough to use sun breathing swordsmanship as a demon. Another theory or you might say argument that I want to bring up is that Demon Sir is an anti-shonen. I outlined this in more detail in my The Controversial Philosophy of Demon Slayer video, but the main idea is that a lot of shonen tend to have characters who strive to be the best. They prioritize this goal. Luffy wants to be Pirate King in One Piece, Naruto wants to be Hokage in Naruto, Deku wants to be the greatest hero in MHA, Asta wants to be the Wizard King in Black Clover, and so on and so on. Shonen obviously is just referring to a demographic, but it can't be denied that shonen often follow this formula. 
In stark contrast to this, Tenja doesn't want to be the strongest Demon Slayer. Rather, he wants to save his sister and go back to living a peaceful and, by Sean's standards, uneventful life. In fact, the guy who wanted to be the strongest desperately was Upper Moon One Kokushibo, and his life turned out horribly because of that unquenchable desire. So it's interesting to look at Demon Slayer through this lens, as it subverts common shonen ideas and asks us to reassess what's actually most important in life. And just to make things clear, this isn't good or bad per se, it's just different and I appreciate that about Demon Slayer. And that is the Demon Slayer Iceberg. Smash that like button if you appreciate this video, which will no doubt turn out to be a long one that required a bunch of work and research. Like I said, if you learned something new, it would really be appreciated if you smash that like button and subscribe. And if you like this, you shouldn't miss our Every Upper Moon's Backstory video where we go in depth into the fascinating and sometimes shocking backstories of each Upper Moon, where we give each story more justice than I could do in this video. Link on screen right now and in the description.